how much is committed sajan right now we're talking to a lot of people but uh, we don't have any commitments kitna like zero <laughs> like what's your plan i'm like uh, if you don't mind if uh, if you can put in a bit of money i think it'll make a lot of difference people will believe in this he said how much i said we're raising 6 crores can you put in 20 25 lakhs he thinks about it smiles and he says uh, i can put in that but only on one condition you let me put the entire money i'm like sajan i have to be honest i have no other investor take the full round obviously in our head electric is basically moving from 25% efficiency to 90% efficiency and hence the energy cost drops dramatically hi tarun thanks for joining the grad capital cohort speaking to the companies i find introductions awkward but i guess every most of them know what you're building uh, either energy and coincidentally we invest in student startups you started as a student so i guess my first i'll directly get into those questions that people care about how do you think of uh, building long term in terms of uh, things taking time for people to show what you're building that how do you get people excited how do you think of long term in general instead of build fast break fast i think they're both very uh, different companies um and it's not i i think uh, when in, when you are in college you only have like which was asking that question before i think when you are in college you only know two things especially if you are in engineering college you already know stuff that was successful 5 years ago which means it's popular and known to every kid today right like today a social thing right you already know that um or generally if you are in engineering you kind of know stuff that you can build while you are at college which is more often than hard, not hardware um so i think natural selection basically means उसमें ही ज्यादा स्टार्टअप्स मिलेंगे आपको वी वॉन्ट एन एक्सेप्शन मोस्टली स्टफ दैट वी कुड बिल्ड वाइल वी आर स्टिल अ स्टूडेंट वॉज अ लॉर्ड ऑफ फेयरली इंटरेस्टिंग हार्डवेयर काफी टाइम स्पेंड किया बिल्डिंग दैट वाइल एट कॉलेज टू अर्स दैट इवेंचुअली बिकेम अ वे ऑफ लाइफ बिकॉज मोस्ट ऑफ स्टफ दैट वी डिड वाइल यू स्टार्ट कॉलेज वॉज लाइक स्टफ दैट वु टेक टू थ्री ईयर्स टू बिल्ड मिनिमम uh we build a lot of really complicated in external combustion engines while we were at college they took us about 3 and a half years to get to a good prototype uh, spending every summer and every weekend doing that so it became pretty natural for us to think of long term projects long term outlook and a lot of long term storytelling pros and cons uh, i would say if you pick up stuff that's uh, that that's got a long build up well the obvious negative is fundraising becomes super hard because you have no metrics that traditionally investors get right you don't have you don't have app installs you don't have wau metrics you don't have uh, customers cohorts proof kuch nahi aapke paas mm-hmm. right um and hence every fundraiser is super difficult the positive thing is once you build something that takes a long time to build your entry barrier is very high so if what you built works after 4 years of building it if it works mm-hmm. the chances that you will see eight companies building the same damn shit copying you very easily is very low you may get like one or two competitors best case scenario you will not have like an army of me too companies immediately pop up kyunki agar aapko chaa sa laga to unko bhi teen saal lagne wala hai so your entry barrier is super high and if it's hardware your ramp up is reasonably fast mm. uh but the upfront investment is super high so it's a it's a more binary outcome it, you you don't get early feedback you work karne wala hai ki nahi work karne wala hai you will realize 5 years later that this was a terrible idea or 5 years later this is fantastic and you are pretty quickly famous yeah so that's one reason why like maybe why people like why combinator and the story of zuckerberg like hey you test something so soon with the customers so the founders come out of like this customer delusion that you really building that people care for so the second question is how did you know that people will care about what you're building that's going to take five years how did you build that confidence so you have to take proxies that you uh, your ideal situation would be a beshna start ka do people love it and you know that's a great feedback but you don't have it so you will take the closest proxies which is test feedback on uh, in our case it's a consumer product to kafi help karta hai wo so consumer product mein go out with early prototypes and test where customers eyes light up i think sometimes it comes out as um, either believes that 
you shouldn't see customer feedback a little bit like apple <laughs> but actually we've been in in many ways the opposite of that we've we've sought feedback a lot very aggressively very early on um so the first feedback that we collected was uh, before we did anything before we built anything like not even before a sketch the first thing i did was go out and meet about i think um, uh 40 customers over an entire day i mean a customer a day right like not 40 customers in a day so i would typically while i was so i worked for about 6 months in my job i would just work for 6 months uh, not a very long stint in those stints in 6 months every saturday was practically go and meet a customer unke sath karo baitho coffee ya lunch karo unke ghar pe ja ke and spend a lot of time trying to truly understand what their life is like and how they think so i did a lot of it to basically conclude that in our case for example 40 interactions to conclude these guys love electric hate every product out there ago technology is not a problem products are hence a good product can solve this solve the sector then the first thing we invested in was actually designer i think many people believe ether ka engineering is good and which i do believe i think engineering is the best in the world right now as far as two wheelers go but the first engineer the first person that we actually had was a designer and the view that sopran me and my co-founder had was yeah they engineering to ho jayegi i think we're good enough engineers to figure out how to package everything in but let's first put a wrapper let's first put a product that people will actually like right if people don't like what you're building up front to i think selling is super hard so we actually got a designer first got a sketch very famously and that sketch is there in our office it is 2013 ka sketch even before we incorporated the company by the way okay before incorporation all we hired a designer first to do a sketch and that sketch is exactly what the 450 looks like today oh, wow so the sketch was so successful every customer that you went out and showed that sketch to basically loved it and we were like and, and it was almost on a whim it was not even i i think in retrospect it was not even a suggestion i made i think it was just a loose conversation with the designer ki are some futuristic vehicles so he i think just sketched out a touch screen dashboard i think at that point i was not even sure what to do with the screen dashboard i'll be honest i i i have a very hazy memory now but the screen looks so damn cool and so damn fun that i i remember as i started talking to customer i just started pitching isme google maps hoga theek hai and it worked like a charm people started liking the idea so that was a second test uh opportunity hai whether we have a product that at least at a look perspective seems to sell i started inventing specs that we kind of felt we can squeeze inside this and made up a random imaginary number of price uh back then i think an active was 60000 rupees i just started artificially randomly saying 85000 rupees just to check koi ha bole aadmi funnily uh this by late 2013 about 20 people actually pre order that scooter and about 8 people i think paid us 85000 rupees the money that i said we'll charge eventually uh and it was the we never ran a kickstarter campaign formally frankly so we opportunity mila but that was quite crazy for us and that i think convinced us a lot that what we have as a sketch will work for a lot of customers so that was second data point hmm, hmm. and um uske baad mein there was a long phase of us basically after we became convinced enough and we took a long time by the way to became as a nigi we decided to spend one sprint ek hafte mein do hafte mein decide to make a point we took a sweet time like the sketch was june 2013 i think till march 2014 we sat on that sketch and basically whiteboarded every day right Uh, the original pitch for ether for ether was simple safe sasta that was the scooter ka pitch it'll be a simple scooter it'll be a safe scooter it'll be a sasta scooter and the original spec was 25 km per hour uh it's very safe because it's like very slow and it'll basically have like some 400 500 watt ka motor and level lithium ion battery to so safe bahut hoga and simple hoga and um, as we talk to more and more people we realized the policy of all of it or a 9 month period we changed the pitch and made it sporty exciting fun went up 10 times on motor power change a lot but basically because of what we realized customers were thinking after showing them a better and better and a better sketch fast track 2016 we went back to the market again but 2016 we actually had like some sort of a engineering prototype it was not a productionizable version but we had something that actually worked and looked good and we put it out in the media so we actually took the full opposite strategy ki isko media mein rakh dete hain iska pura launch kar dete hain 
एंड वी आर लाइक सो वी आर द फर्स्ट गाइज टू डू लाइक अ स्टूपेडली अर्ली लॉन्च हमारे बाद में आई सॉ लॉर्ड ऑफ कंपनीज मेक द सेम मिस्टेक विच इज पुट आउट अ प्रोडक्ट ईयर्स एड ऑफ शेड्यूल एंड देन स्ट्रगल विद द द फॉलो आउट आफ्टर दैट विद एवरीबडी डिसअपॉइंटेड इन द टाइम लाइन्स वी आर द फर्स्ट वन डू इट बट सिंस वी आर द फर्स्ट वन वी नॉट गेट एनी नेगेटिव फीडबैक एवरीबडी इज वेरी हैप्पी टू सी दिस बट यू द फर्स्ट वन ट्वेंटी सिक्सटीन में वी जस्ट पुट द स्कूटर आउट एंड आई स्टार्टेड अलॉन्ग विद सम ऑफ माई टीम मेम्बर्स वी स्टार्ट मीटिंग कस्टमर्स इन लार्ज ग्रुप्स every weekend so every weekend practically we would host like 40 to 100 people at our office uh take a lot of space and just put people on bean bags and spend 3 to 5 hours with them pitching our product and the idea was boss pitch perfect karni hai so ye looks up test case hai theek hai we'll see what seems to work we had like we'll talk about speed let's see if people get excited about it we'll talk about range let's see if people get excited about that we'll talk about touch screen and google maps let's see people get excited about that विल टॉक अबाउट लिथियम आयन फास्ट चार्जिंग देखते किस किस पे एक्साइट हो रहा है विद इट ट्वेंटी फोर या थर्टी सच सेशन ओवर अ कपल ऑफ ईयर्स एंड दैट वॉज अ मार्केट रिसर्च लाइक अ सॉलिड मार्केट रिसर्च एक दो हजार लोगों को मिले होंगे हम लोग यू मैंशन दैट यू वट प्री ऑर्डर ऑफ एटी फाइव के यू थिंक इन जनरल फॉर हार्डवेयर कंपनीज इट्स गुड आइडिया टू लाइक टेक मनी फ्रॉम कस्टमर्स एंड देन थिंक अबाउट बिल्डिंग दैट्स ए आर आई थिंक एवरीथिंग इज अ कंटेक्सट इन दैट कंटेक्स एट दैट टाइम in india remember when we started this there was not a single hardware startup that we could look up to right ki boss inhone aisa kiya we could follow in their footsteps nobody had raised any money when we raised a million dollars i think we were the first company to raise a million dollars as a hardware startup when we raised 12 million dollar we were the first company to raise 12 when we raised 30 i think we were the second company to raise 30 there was it was just us and i think around then gray orange robotics that's it just two companies thi so um today for especially if you've got a consumer product uh, in the wearable space fitness space i think there was a good time when pre orders worked pre orders have some debatability today i never actually believed in pre orders i i thought it was a lot of work for very little to show for it but taking 20 30 pre orders gave me a lot of good practice and internal confidence i think um, the biggest value of the pre order phase was as a founder getting the confidence to to say with a high degree of conviction ki sir ye product work karega i believe in this because these are the kind of people i met and this is why they love it i think you get a very confident pitch it was good to have people actually give you a check uh otherwise if you ask me will will an investor give a lot of credibility or you ran a kickstarter campaign and you got like 3 crores worth of pre-orders i don't know if that works now i think that's very low value you also mentioned that you were checking with customers as, as to what specifications are exciting them yeah those specifications also lead to some engineering implications and maybe do you build it on your own uh, to really build what the yeah, customer wants so how did that <laughs> play out no it was a disaster like uh, we kept changing our product spec for years actually 20 as i said 2014 may early 2014 that we were thinking of this 25 km per hour 500 watt 800 watt motor power Uh, one 1.5 kilowatt battery, very disaster spec. That was that changed overnight by mid 2014 or early 2014. Can I boss? We will build something that will do, I think 60 kilometers per hour. That will do 3,000 watts of motor power, and that will have some fast charging. By early 2014, we started saying, "No, no, this has to do 70, and this has to have 2.5 kilowatt hour." But spec grows gradually. Uh-huh. right as we realize the practicality of it in 2018 i remember we did a massive engineering change because we got this vehicle out and we saw it and we realized it is not looking good in person as much as we thought for it to truly live up to its potential and look as good as it looked in the early sketches instead of steel frame we'll have to move to a cast aluminum frame it was a bhayanak engineering change i think we like we killed ourselves attempting that and we did with the transition it took us a solid year to change all the parts to cast aluminum because it's a massive change frame is a super complicated part you talking about at least 40 pieces of tools that will have to be retooled sab ki die change hogi sab ki tool design change honge but we did it with the entire transition we changed our battery pack completely because that technology went obsolete by the time we got this out we upgraded our motor power to 5000 watts by the time we actually launched So 800 watt, 3000 watt, 5000 watt, it just kept upgrading. But every single time we concluded the same thing that that's the right product. We will get one shot when we launch, 
of proving that all these years of work, we are a company that understands product really well. If we screw up, if that product launches as a ha theek hai, I think then we are dead because we don't have enough money and we don't have a legacy and we don't have a reputation. No one will give us money after that. We'll die. So we're pretty clear. Even if it takes like a year or two extra, hmm. when you launch, damn, build your reputation with it. Don't screw around with the reputation. What engineering problems did you had to solve internally? Like new engineering problems. Did did that come up? That hey, we're arriving at an unsolved. Like vendors can't work or how did how did that did that happen? Oh, it was a lot. So it has run the largest R and D, largest product development team for electric vehicles in the country for a long time. Today. our product development team is the largest in the world for electric two wheelers uh, about 1000 people and uh, uh, we were forced to do a lot of firsts the 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 first thing that we did was which was truly globally first was to put a touch screen dashboard on a scooter in production anywhere uh, nobody before us did it and after us the only companies that did it are all indian companies which were all competitors to us so it was truly ground breaking uh, and i think the team that worked on it got a once in a lifetime opportunity because uh, it was just not done like even today we have basically no suppliers to do it practically like all of it is basically ether design which has been replicated after that we were the first ones to build a lithium ion battery pack for a two wheeler in india we were the first ones to run set up a lithium ion battery pack manufacturing in india we were the first one to do cell design in india we Nobody knows it because we never publicized it. We produced, I think, about two thousand lithium-ion cells. We set up a wet lab, and we did the first ever cell fabrication in the country outside of Academia, uh, because we realized to understand this battery pack, we'll have to understand cells. So we actually set up a cell lab, hired a bunch of bunch of PhDs, and this is in 2016. We are still close to our college life then, then <laughs> being an entrepreneur. So that was the first. Uh, we set up the first fast charges. So there were a lot of actually I can keep going frame may transmission may belt architectures uh cast aluminum a lot of stuff was first of its kind um but then like none of it not, eventually none of it was very surprising the path that we were on we kind of knew is ma karna padega first is the collection of these a lot of first hmm. is that how you think of long term defensibility because there are so many a lot of first that a company will discover hmm. uh, i think no i think these are a phase this was a phase i think back then since we were the first player to build it we were going to do a lot of firsts today i actually think given the reputation that we have we would actually do a better job doing a follow being a follower now see us time pe the disruption was like what was the disruption that etha brought to the market it was the spec it was the first product to do this right and that's why we got multiple rounds of funding because we could impress investors ki boss nobody can build this this team has a lot of capability right like they have a lot of foresight but today i will not get a brownie point by saying ki yeah, maine kuch pehli baar socha i'm like dekha wo ho gaya lot of startups can think for the first time today we will build a reputation by listen our experience is the most consistent experience our quality is the highest our experience is the most uh, intuitive right so actually today we no longer care about being the first now is, is uh, it brand is setting up a brand it's a uh, it's product quality it's experience ka quality for us now it's far more important to make sure that our experience is is deeper and better than anybody else because increasingly that's what you're known as a brand for uh we are no longer i and i don't wish it ki we should be known as being the first to the market uska upside is very limited so it was a phase it lasted us for several years now we are on to a different phase and in this journey of like sort of building right and slow ha yeah. at each fundraising how did you get investors excited uh, i mean what was that starting from your first check like, yeah uh, how did you get people excited i think until you have a ton of revenue your only hope is selling a dream and in our case the only way to sell that dream was to basically put together a better prototype so every time somebody would give us money we will be like we'll give you a better prototype you give us 1 million dollars you got a prototype you give us 12 million dollars you will get a better prototype you give us 30 million dollars you will get another prototype and the idea is the prototype keeps improving and uh, we can and you have to do a lot of storytelling up uh, you will have to convince them with every step that this is magical again um so yeah 
I think, in my opinion, the, it was never a business case, not for the first several rounds of funding. I think now at this stage, when you're doing like hundreds of millions of dollars of revenue, that's when wo thoda excel ho jata hai. somebody will do a genuine discounted cash flow, somebody will actually put a model, look at margins, P multiples, etc. But for the first nine years of Ather's life, I would say it's been basically just the story. And how did your, uh, you raised from uh, Bindi Mansal and Sachin Mansal, how did that happen as a uh, young college student? Uh, no, we are hmm. not students. We already graduated. One year, one year, one year. So, I was basically out of options. We were, we've been trying to raise for six months uh, since early 2014 to June 2014. Uh, no success and um, uh, in a sort of like a Hail Mary kind of an attempt, uh, a friend suggested ki kaam kar, just write to entrepreneurs who hopefully can introduce you to other investors and um, we made a list of seven, eight names and Sachin Bini were one of them and uh, Raghuva Taxi for sure was another one and there were a few others but I was like, listen, I don't know any of them. How do I find the details? And uh, realize that contact list is not very good. Like, we don't know anybody in the ecosystem. It's not like my senior knows anybody. So, uh, and we were very poorly networked at that point. Uh, today, the world looks very different and people have fantastic networks. Mars was terrible. So, what it did was, took a guess. Like, what will Sachin's email ID be? <laughs> Sachin at flipkart.com, right? Like, what is my email ID? Turn at ethernet.com. Sachin will likely be Sachin at Sachin Flipkart.com, Bini at Flipkart.com, Raghu at TaxiForSure.com and so on and forth. So we sent mails. Some of them bounced back, some of them didn't. So I understood that the mail was right. And funnily, I sent the mail, I think, in the evening. And um, uh, four hours, five hours later, Sachin responded back. Uh, so my mail was that, look, this pitch is. We are trying to get introduction to investors. Can you help? Uh, and I attached the pitch deck. Or I think I attached the pitch deck. I don't exactly remember. And kuch ghande baad unka reply aagya, this is great, uh, if you're in Bangalore, let me know. I just wanted back, I'm in Bangalore tomorrow. <laughs> Let's, uh, let me know. <laughs> yes, I was in Chennai at that point. <laughs> so uh, he said, sure, Raja. So took the bus, got there in the morning, uh, went, met him, made the pitch, uh, asked for feedback. Uh, my question was, ki yaad, this pitch is not working with investors. Basically, we are saying that two recently graduated students will start a vehicle company uh, and compete with eventually Bajaj, Hero, TBS. Uh, obviously, they're not buying it. So what should I change? Maybe I should say that, you know, we'll just do this first, get revenue, show traction, fir ye karenge, fir ye karenge, eventually kaari banayenge. And his feedback was, ki, no, listen, I think an entrepreneur should always pitch what they believe in. Aap kushmi belief hai, ye pitch karo. That's the story. That's the only story you have. And this is a great story. So fundraising hogi. Like, yeah, this guy just raised a billion dollars. Isko to pata hoga investment kaise raise karte hai. So I'm like, brilliant, aapko pata hai, sahi hai. Uh, aap introduction kara do. He made a few introductions. They didn't pan out. Fast forward four months later, uh, we still have not raised anything. Zero. And we are out of money. Like, generally out of money. Like, zero. Kuch nahi hai account mein. So, this is my last, 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 last Hail Mary. Ek investor tha, usne bulaya tha Bangalore mein. Milne aya. And over coffee, he says, we can't invest. I'm like, to bulaya ki bank. Okay. This is, uh, and the meeting was on Lavelle's road. So I remember walking out of Ravel's road, walking on Ravel's, ki sala ki pura trip bekar ho gaya, paise bhi nahi hai, kuch nahi hai. Now we'll have to like just go back, I'll have to just go back home. As a last this thing, while walking, I just send a mail to Sachin. Sachin, tons of exciting updates. Let me know if you want to catch up sometime. He responds immediately. Yeah, let me know when you're in town. I said, I'm in town today. Are you free today evening? Okay. He said, yes, come. This is two days before Big Billion Day. And I think this was the first Big Billion Day, 2014. Right, and the first big billionaire that Flipkart ever did. So I was quite surprised that he said yes to meeting. Okay, and I go, I billion billionaire, I don't mail respond. Like, my like, year would have been like, like I would have been out. Uh, he responded, I went, I met, uh, office was empty, everyone was busy. Walked in, sat down with him, pitched, I rather gave him an update. He said, Great, fundraising, and what I said, Well, nothing, you know, but I'll be honest, uh, I haven't had a lot of success. How much is committed? Sajan, right now we're talking to a lot of people, but uh, we don't have any commitments. Kitna, like zero. <laughs> like what's your plan I'm like uh, if you don't mind if uh, if you can put in a bit of money I think it'll make a lot of difference people will believe in this he said how much I said we're raising 6 crores can you put in 20-25 lakhs he thinks about it smiles and he says uh, I can put in that but only on one condition 
you let me put the entire money i'm like sachin i have to be honest i have no other investor take the full round obviously so i kid you not that was it he agreed he agreed and uh, bini was just walking out the room he immediately tapped and called him he said you know i talk mention with these guys you want to split the round he said yeah i split the round and i think okay fine <laughs> round done a month later we raised the cash uh, that saved the company i think if if not for sachin back then and bini ka support we would have died next month we would have shut shop i would have gone and likely sat down for cat after that and swapnil would have reapplied to some us university we would have definitely closed uh their their conviction kind of saved us and that kind of kick started a bunch of events that i think separated ether from many ev companies so us time there were a lot of ev companies we were not the only one in fact there were companies like torque which were frankly pioneers talk motorcycles existed at least for 6 years before we came around and so and they had built a lot they had competed they went a lot with a lot of stuff so they were more credible than us and there were many other players attempting this i think the conviction that sachin and bini did showed in us at that critical juncture made a key difference because their million dollars was not just their million dollars immediately after that a month after that tiger committed to putting in 12 million and like it just completely changed the trajectory so how would you uh, describe your own personal traits as a founder like some people are paranoid and sort of like paranoid drives a lot of stuff how would you describe like what key traits that like you brought in the team i am quite optimistic i think uh, that sort of has defined my work in the company uh it's pros and cons sometimes the optimism is uh, quite unfounded <laughs> but uh, it's optimistic nevertheless i think optimism is one and um, uh i think honesty is honesty transparency in communication i would say transparency communication more specific transparent communication is another and generally i think that's come to define ether also quite a lot because uh, ether ka personality is also from everything that we have researched kind of tells us that people think generally ether is very transparent in comms and i think that's also because the founders are very transparent in comms so optimism transparent in comms uh a bad trade i would say um uh uh we we are not great marketers uh i think or rather we are not great at i think we are good at storytelling but i think we are bad at um, marketing which is uh, getting the word out to a lot more people getting getting a message shared really fast so that's also been a defining thing we've uh, we've been slow on that uh but the package comes together yeah how do you look at like the future in general one of electric and second of generally how energy is produced and used that's um it's a very large question i'll be honest uh it, so the reason we called us a uh, this is ether energy and not ether motors is because we hope that before we die we are in the business of energy somehow uh that was a starting passion for both of us um and the underlying philosophy there is we think energy needs to be free we think energy needs to be and 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 i think uh, one of the big things people can work on in their lifetimes today is helping reduce the cost of energy dropping the cost of energy is one of the most most impactful things entrepreneurs could work on if they have the opportunity uh we in fact characterized our work building electric vehicles as actually one which is reducing the cost of energy transportation is the largest energy use case in the world yeah and transportation is the lowest efficiency of any industry every industry operates at between 70 to 95% transportation because internal combustion engine operates at 25% a transition to electric while you may want to describe it as environment and and co2 and emissions and petrol savings and all that in our head electric is basically moving from 25% efficiency to 90% efficiency and hence the energy cost drops dramatically why do we care about energy cost because we think um civilization moves forward if you take a really zoomed out macro view civilization genuinely moves forward every time the cost of energy drops by a factor of 10 uh literally you'll have you can go back to discovery of fire discovery of fire is basically like 10xing your source of energy uh, your access to energy uh steam engine internal combustion engine 
I think these have been like some of the largest reasons why civilizations moved forward. And we actually think that last 50, 70 years, energy access to the, the, the richest folks in the world hasn't changed meaningfully. Like the energy consumption per capita of an average American in, the last, in 1970 to today is probably the same or even worse, right? And that's interesting because while energy access to the world is increasing, if the richest layer is not changing, that means their life from 1970 to today hasn't changed that much. Sure, sabke has mobile phone aage, and there's a tablet, but your, how you experience a daily life looks very much the same. Think of life before discovery of steam engine and after, right? Like industrialization. Ke ke tha. So we think, um, I, I think the world would look very different if we had, for example, 10x more or 100x more access to energy. Like we would be building Dyson spheres. I think it's, it's, it's so different that most of us probably can't even imagine how the economics of it will look like, how powerful the transition is. Um, and I do believe that in our lifetimes, that that 100x change will happen. Um, it's a very long topic. I can talk about it for like half an hour. I've given like one and a half hours kind. So I have talked about internal all hands for like almost one and a half, two hours about just this topic. Uh, so it's a very long topic. Actually. And, but what do you think can't be electrified like uh, in within, let's say, transportation? It's not about what can be or cannot be electrified. I think it's about energy cost. Fundamentally, I think electrification is the right solution because for automotives, because petrol or gasoline or fossil fuels are a limited source of energy. See, they're a finite source, right? Eventually, petrol will ho jayega. Anything that's a finite source will be priced like a finite source, right? Nobody will say petrol free mein hume, because there's only so much petrol that will ever come out, right? So if it's a finite source, it'll be priced like a finite source. And that means the cost will never go below a certain price, right? Like we are spending whatever you ultimately do, 70, 80, 100 rupees a liter. So our co cost per kilometer in a car is today 10 rupees. On a scooter is two and a half rupees, right? Now you would say, Are, but for an average Indian, that's just like 30,000 rupees in a year. Even if the 30,000 were to become like 3,000, does it really change our world? But the thing is, transportation is at the center of the entire economy. Yeah. Okay. What yeah. is the cost of most manufacturing? Cost of most manufacturing is, uh, sorry, uh, two factor, a cost of energy and cost of transportation. If transportation cost starts dropping, a lot of industries are underlying economic changes. Your cost of transport of goods basically becomes not the cost of petrol or diesel. It becomes the cost of the person moving the vehicle and the cost of the vehicle. That means cost of transportation can drop by a factor of four times, right? Uh, a lot of agriculture produce becomes much cheaper. Your logistics cost drops for every industry if transportation becomes cheaper, right? Fundamentally, if cost of energy comes down, let's say if airlines were to go fully electric, okay? Uh, and not, fos not fuel, not aviation fuel. What's the impact? Well, I think unfortunately, most of us only think about the environmental impact, but the real change is airlines becomes hospitality industry. Think of it. What's the cost of taking a flight? It's basically the cost of the air hostess and their and their hospitality. And the and the plane is like basically an infinite a asset, right? Oh, 50 years old, it's going plane. Aapka. Hai. Fuel cost is now a small fraction. Like today, if you're spending 40,000 rupees to go from US, US and back, that'll become probably 2,000 rupees. So the real cost of a ticket will be the cost of bhai, aapko ghante AC ke environment mein hai, and somebody has to like, you know, take care of you. Take care. That's some cost, but that's it. It's basically the hospitality industry now. Wow. It changes a lot of things. I, I, I can give you an example after example. We, we think if energy cost drops, I think economics changes dramatically. Yeah, this is helpful. And we hope like some companies we fund are working in energy and directly or indirectly reducing cost. Uh, the, the thing is, I think unfortunately, when you think of this and it happened to us also, when we, uh, so we were, we've been trying to start Ether Energy as a company since 2009, second year of college. And we made this, mis not mistake, the uh, easy assumption is, oh, if you want to work in the energy sector, work on energy production. Okay, energy system. But when you look at the entire supply chain of energy, you realize, you know what? Look at the cost of energy today. How much am I paying to ride a kilometer on my scooter? Well, I'm paying 2.5 rupees. Right? That's the cost of petrol. Um, 
but what's the cost like what if at, at the, in the energy supply chain which part can i fix that'll drop this the most and it turns out okay the biggest change is if i make this electric if the vehicle were to become electric my cost drops down to 30 paise per kilometer instead of 2.5 okay unfortunately at this point a lot of people start thinking i should produce cheaper energy but the problem is listen electricity is already down to about 1.3 rupees per unit uh with some solar fields now okay if that 1.3 were to become zero your per kilowatt hour cost of electricity will still be instead of 7 rupees 5.7 rupees aapka jo fully loaded cost aa raha hai 6 7 8 rupees that you pay per kilowatt hour only 15% of that is actually cost of energy production actually most of the cost of energy is in distribution storage and application and uh, i think more people need to work on these layers because biggest bang for the buck is there i think when per kilowatt hour cost of electricity were to drop to like 2 rupees that's when you can say boss 1.3 out of that is just the cost of energy itself ab mujhe usko optimize karna hai but i think before you get to 2 there's a lot of fat sitting elsewhere and in our case though even to get to electricity we have to move the vehicle from petrol to electric sabse bada bang for the buck is there 2.5 rupees to like 30 paise and would you have an alternate startup idea that you'd like to share with us that you have been thinking about that a student can probably yaar hamare sara ideas bahut hi zyada long term le jata hai unfortunately like there was an idea of decentralized energy production and distribution but it was is so hard that we gave up on it and we we we, we thought building a scooter and starting an automotive <laughs> company is simpler um there there has been i i think there is a lot of potential basically okay i'll still repeat the same thing i think there's a lot of potential if somebody were to think of dc power and decentralized energy production and storage i think there's simpler ways of doing this than how we attempted but i think there's a lot of opportunity there uh and and building something which is more consumer facing uh because everything which is back end is controlled by a very complicated set of companies i think more consumer facing the you are i think better you control your own destiny so stay more consumer focused beyond that what are I, i think space is exciting outside of energy i think that's a fantastic space to be in uh, if if i was to build something out of ether outside of ether i would definitely build something uh in india today on 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 the space side i, I think there are a lot of really good startups out there uh i think there's a lot of opportunity building um outside of energy space underlying sectors like this i think there's a lot of opportunity in the um uh i i see a lot of startups doing something interesting uh, smart devices mein uh, i think there's a lot of opportunity but for a very different reason which is that india does not have enough brands i think we're building a very powerful brand uh doing consumer devices in india i think is is also a very big opportunity india specific thanks so much tarun for joining uh, i hope students get inspired to start some more hard companies <laughs> listening to this maybe in energy storage and distribution